For anybody who was like actually up and around when I was, I was gonna stream this. Originally something came up, I gotta record this quickly and I'm gonna premiere it instead. But I have a lot to say about uh, the recent Tower of God chapters. I read Fast Pass, by the way, and there was a time where I was reading the Raw, so I was like four weeks ahead. So the chapter where Bam challenges the Ranker to kind of up his status in the tower and get the elders to come agree with him and help him out and whatnot when Hua Ryun came through, that's actually the last chapter I'd read for a while until recently. So I kind of reread season three. I reread through season three up until recent, went to the Fast Pass, and I gotta say, I feel like since Yas Racha, like, um, basically killed all the K9 people and retreated like around that time up until right now we are in a fast pass which I'm not spoiling by the way I'm not going any further than um, the chapter that you see in the title I'm not going any further than that but there will be a fast pass discussion on it I'm gonna record for the week so y'all come peep that if you're fast pass readers but in three weeks if you're a regular reader you can go watch the video after the fact it wouldn't be a spoiler anymore but anywho let's hop into this discussion for this chapter I got no time to parlay unless it's big checks or parlays. I've been bricks, it's not far away. Light the spliff and I stargaze. Consultation with the constellations. They said the world was in a dark phase. It got me desperado for protection. Carry big strap in a guitar case. Yeah, so I felt like this chapter was a bit of a turning point. And it's hard for me to say this, but like, I, in a lot of ways, I feel like this is how season three, season two, sorry, leading into season three should have ended. I feel like. New Waves artificially created a seasonal a, ending for a season to, into season three, and this isn't a big deal. I just felt like if season two had ended here, where this big war is coming, and now we're really, really going to go get Jin Sung, uh, we have all these forces. Like I feel like this is a big. Where you have that narrator come through and you do those like awesome kind of send off. We're gonna change the tower, this and that and the other. But it was. This has kind of been the turning point. I've been enjoying the last like six chapters or so like heavily. Um, but I have to say that I still don't like how we got here. And I think that's important. I think that matters. One of the examples I constantly use is that um, in Game of Thrones, I'm not going to spoil anything crazy, or uh, crazy, but just that like with Daenerys, what happened in the last season, no one's upset that it happened. We don't like how we got there. Most, a lot of readers like to see hints Right, they don't feel like we don't like when things feel like they came out of nowhere, or they feel like they were blindsided by something, or you retcon. Like you want to kind of see the seeds planted, and then maybe even if even if it's being watered off screen, you want to see them planted so you can be like, oh, that's the chapter where that was planted, and now it came into fruition, or it grew whatever and bared fruit. Twenty two hundred twenty hundred chapter later, Jesus Christ, that'd be a long story. Two two hundred chapters later, so I was just like reading it, and I'm thinking to myself, okay. This is setting up a lot of good stuff and everything, but like I still don't like how we got here. Like it was messy, it was sloppy, it was inconsistent, it was it was contradictory in a lot of ways. I would say, especially with the blog post versus what I'm reading. And and I felt like with this chapter, he kinda just stopped with the bullshit. We know Bam's ranker level. Just stop capping. Stop capping. It's bad for your health. It's not good for you. Don't do it anymore. I keep telling you guys. But my, my <laughs> sorry. My point is that. I felt like see you just cut a lot of bullshit out. I gotta say, in terms of rep in terms of presentation, it wasn't the sexiest because it's just like he's just kind of explaining. Okay, this ranker was basically fighting how Bam used to fight. I get what he's doing here. He's just trying to he's just trying to quickly list and tell you everything Bam is capable of adapting his basic skills and Shinshu control and everything. You know all the. The building blocks you would need to get into the more advanced stuff, it, they're solid. Their foundation is solid now, but it was what he was supposed to be doing with the Van Kel, learning his basics, because it was like he was just kind of spamming off his power without being able to regulate it in certain ways. And this fight with the Ranker was showing us how he's grown and whatnot. And there was a couple blog posts where I feel like I read this in my Discord. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase loosely, but it was kind of like... CU was saying that kind of experience isn't doesn't matter too much in tower if you have raw talent power and potential it's gonna be experience wisdom and things of that nature so I feel like Bam was showing that off here but they even added the caveat that the part where it's like oh he is almost like he was well better trained or more experienced than this ranker which comes into play when we're talking about our, our do some rankers get carried you know what I'm saying and like 
I don't know. I don't I don't really respect the title ranker as much. I'm gonna take it case by case, like I told you guys before. Like when I get a character and he's a ranker, I'm gonna look at his last name, his first name, what they can do, and I take them in a vacuum. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, it's a high ranker. Like I, that doesn't really mean much to me anymore at this point. Because regulars are just running through the tower. I don't know how you guys feel about um but yeah, like but like I said, I'm enjoying what's happening now, but I still don't like how we got here. The cage stuff wasn't it, some of the dog stuff wasn't it, but it's neither here nor there. I'm trying not to be as negative or negative Nancy, I'm trying to be positive. I'm feeling good about Tower God. The anime has me excited, season one's gonna be good. I feel like the webtoons hitting again, I'm excited for what's happening, so I just kinda feel a little bit reinvigorated, which is kinda why I wanted to make this video, but damn. Crunchyroll and the, the webtoon hitting and all kinds of this stuff is throwing off my schedule bad. Anywho. Cha, I don't really like him. I just don't like him. I don't think I care about any character in Hidden Grove except the rack looking guy, kind of. He looks cool. I don't like, um, what's his name? Doan? Doan? The Forget Me Not? I'm just not interested. I really am not. Cha also doesn't interest me. Uh, damn, there's so much that I want to say, but I have to make sure I don't get off this chapter. But Yama continues to deliver when he, um, when he approaches Doom and talks about the canine people, while they can be controlled by Lopi, Lopobia family, uh, Doom admits we used to belong to Lopobia family, and our parents died because of them. And the cool thing about that is like, what I like about this this whole part with Yama is, as much as Yama is the leader and he's taken over, you know Doom was the head honcho for a while because he just has some info like this that Yamo just was never aware of or privy to, and, and also the fact that apparently Doom could make canine people, so that's probably, there's probably a reason for that. It's, but that's important. But I don't know if you all remember Too Raw, who's Too Raw, <laughs> and he wanted to kill Yas Ratcha. He was a goat man, and I was saying, maybe like, you know, the canine people, feline people, and the goat people, they're, they're, they're all these subsets kind of like a hybrid family type from the Lopobia that all used to belong to them. So the canine people are probably one of them. I wonder if they were, uh, I wonder if they were pets or, or part of a branch family or something. There's, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of intrigue here. All I'm saying is that stuff was good, and I like how SIU got Yama involved. Rage, anger. He's been chilling. He's been not really a quote-unquote, you know, ideal slayer for, for Flaw because he's been chilling, red light district, he's going to do nothing. And then all this stuff came, he lost the people, it's a lot of people he cared about, and now he wants to get into action. And I like that. So, he's, I don't know, man. Yama, Yama has hit, to me, almost on, like, every cylinder. I don't have any, any issue with it at all. But we're going to, we're going to pull up, man. And we're gonna get this war started. The war is gonna be really good. Uh, I, I've been enjoying Calavan a lot. I love how he came back into the squadron. That shit was really cool. Um, and then with the new squadron commander, the high ranker Pobedal Liborik Kun, super cool. He's a Kun Pobedal um, hybrid, a hybrid. And I think this character is intriguing in many ways because because of what we know with the Lopobia family, sorry, not the Lopobia family, sorry, the Pobido family and Jihad wanted them wiped out. So a couple of things you gotta wonder: Does he is he more of a Kun or was he more of a Pobido? Or is he equal? Does he not care? Is he a mole? Is he working for Gustang? Or is this some type of power play by Jihad to put somebody in the in the in the Pobido family, put him in the fray of the war, and maybe? This guy is some important person for that family that they can't just go out and kill him and maybe having him being in the Zahard army is troubling for that family in some facet, which is what I saw. So that's kind of why I liked it. There was a other Kun that was introduced. He was like talking to girls or whatever. I don't even remember like what he was saying. But yeah, man, the, the canine people are ready to attack. They're all going to pull up a couple of last minute training, couldn't explaining some plans and everything. And it just felt like how Calavan called it a great epic, the mission he was on, and that he was doing all of these things to prevent an even uh, greater and bigger war. All of that stuff is starting to come full circle, I feel. I feel like just like, it's like in the last couple of chapters, SAU was like, oh yeah, we got to get Hajin Sung back. That's the point of this. It's like we just finally get, like we were off rail and now we're back on track for some reason. I don't know if anyone else got that impression. Bam, fit it up. And I just love how Hua Ryun came and shit just started happening immediately. She always pushes the story forward. Always. Go. 
gold status. Put respect on her, bro. Like, <sighs> that's a queen, man. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to kick Simi out of the Red Witch Club and take his, uh, his cards. I'm kidding. I won't do that. Anywho, I am very excited for what's to come. There's a lot of things that I really want to say, but I can't say it because I'm, I, I'll be getting into fast pass stuff. But uh, I think for anybody who's just reading regularly, you're gonna be very impressed with the next couple of chapters that are coming. Uh, I truly believe that. Um, I, I want to say this about season three. It's a much better binge read. A lot of you guys were saying that to me in the comment section. Like, reread it as a binge and kind of see how you feel. I feel better about it. It's it's the same way I feel with, with like One Piece and Dressrosa. Like, I feel, I feel better binge reading it. However, I don't think that changes the literal substance that's there. The substance is there week to week as a binge in bulk it doesn't matter what what happened happened it's just sometimes it flows cohesively a little better when you read it all you know not week to week or however weeks you wait to read it or whatnot so i do agree with that i think it's i think it's better than i thought and like not dress rosa feel but it's still my least favorite arc and that's not going to change i don't i that has, that part is still you know the same so oh i'm trying to i, I really don't want to forget anything i wanted to say so i'm just, I'm, I'm trying to think but I want to know what you guys are excited about. Do you like the new Kun Hind Lutch? What the fuck his name was? The new Division Commander of Squadron 4. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen? Who do you think the X Factor in this upcoming battle is going to be? Are we going to see any of the old crew? Is Ran and those guys going to pull up? What do you expect from Hatsu, White, Karaka? Oh, Karaka got to go to work. If Karaka don't go to work... I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to be really sad. I'll cry. But <laughs> I just hope it goes to fucking work. That's what I need. Uh, yeah, but this is this is, this is is good. I, I'm feeling good about the future again. So, yeah. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Anything you think I forgot to touch upon, you just bring it up. And, and you bring it up. Please be um, mindful of people who are not Fast Pass readers and or Raw readers. Please try to keep it just this chapter and anything uh, prior. But don't worry because we're gonna we're gonna have that fast pass discussion soon but i i, I, I gotta get out of here sorry guys um i really want to stream but anywho tower god tower god anime in april we're gonna we're gonna be eating man we eating i love it i love it red out on my body and she aiming with the scope with the bullet in my heart cause it's the only way to cope cause i cannot live without you that's really my throat in my throat i'll never swear she can leave me here to float wait red out on my body and she aiming with the scope